Hi, this is Mrs. Young, and this video is uh, from our functions packet, and it covers lesson four, writing equations from tables and graphs. Um, so right now you want to make sure you get out your functions packet. If you don't have your functions packet, I did post it in Google Classroom. And if you can't print out what you need, you can even just write it down on some plain paper. Um, in your functions packet right now, I'd like you to open it up to page 16. So we're going to run page 16, lesson four of the functions packet, writing equations from tables and graphs. So we're going to take a table and a graph and try to write the equation from the table or the graph. Starts off here with slope intercept form. Again, this is kind of a review from our last unit. We need two pieces of information in order to write the equation of a linear function. You're going to need the slope or m value, right? The slope or the m value. And then we also need the y intercept. The y intercept is the b value. Once we have those two values, we can go ahead and write the equation in the form y equals mx plus b, or slope intercept form. So again, my slope is my m value. It's the number or coefficient in front of the x. And then the b value is the constant or number by itself, and that represents your y-intercept, where the graph crosses the y-axis. Again, that should kind of be review. So if I have a table, from a table, we can find the slope by calculating, let's write down our slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if we have a table of values, we can take two points and plug the numbers into the slope formula to give us our m or slope. Look for the y-intercept as the value where the y, where, of y, where the x value is equal to zero. Again, where the x is zero, that's where the graph crosses the y-axis, and that'll give you your y-intercept, or b value. So again, if we have a table, we can take two points to calculate our slope, and then look for a value of x that is zero, and the corresponding y-value will be our y-intercept, or b value. Graphs. From a graph, we can find the slope by setting up a ratio of rise over run. Again, you should remember um, we spent a lot of time in the last unit with graphs trying to write the equation, so this part should be easy. Remember to find the slope. We did a slope triangle, rise over run. That would give us the slope of the line, right? Rise over run would give us that ratio or slope. Um, and then that's our m value, our slope. And then we're going to look for the y-intercept as the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. And again, where the graph crosses the y-axis, that's your y-intercept or b-value. So again, I think writing the equation from the graph is going to be a little easier for you because we did that quite a bit in the last unit. The table is going to take maybe just a little bit more work. So down here it says practice, practice writing equations from tables and graphs in the following real-world situations. Luke's family goes to the movies and purchases a large popcorn. They're debating whether or not to purchase any drinks. The table below shows how much they'll spend based on the number of drinks they decide to purchase. So again, there's our table of values. Remember the X column is that first column, and then the Y values are in that second column. Um, the first question, A, what is the slope? So again, to calculate the slope from a table, we're going to use our slope formula. So we're going to take the first point, we're going to say 0 is our X1, and then 625 is our Y1. And then we're going to say that 1 is our x2, and then $10 is our y2. These represent two different points or ordered pairs from our table. You can use any two points. I just usually use the first two points, just for me. So I'm going to plug this into my slope formula. y2, that's 10, minus y1, that's 625, over my x2, that's 1, minus my x1, that's 0. So when I subtract, again, this is where you might want to use your calculator. If you don't, you have your calculator handy, you can use um, the calculator on your phone or one that you can find in your house. So 10 minus 625 is 375, and then 1 minus 0 is 1. So we know that our slope is 3.75, right? That's our slope. That's the change in y over the change in x, the cost per drink. So each drink must cost 375. 
the next question says, what is the y-intercept? So my y-intercept, again, I look for an x value of zero, that corresponding y value is gonna represent our y-intercept. So now I know that my y-intercept is 625. So they start off with a cost of 625, and then every time they buy another drink or a drink, your cost is gonna go up $3.75. So our equation, remember your equation in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So we can plug in 375 for the slope, and 625 for the y-intercept, and we can say y equals 3.75x plus 6.25. What does the slope represent in this situation? So again, remember that your slope is the change in y over the change in x, so it's the cost per drink. Um, so here we're gonna say the cost per drink is 375. And then the next question, what does the y-intercept represent? Um, so again, it says that they were going to purchase a large popcorn and then additionally buy drinks. So I'm assuming that the large popcorn must cost $6.25, and then every time they bought a drink, their cost went up $3.75. So we're going to say the cost of just a popcorn, cost of just a large popcorn, with no drinks is 625. So again, if they bought just the popcorn, no drinks, 625. And then every time they bought a drink, their cost would go up another $3.75. Um, so that's an example of writing the equation from a table. So again, from a table, you can use two points to calculate your slope. That's going to be the number in front of the x. And then to find the y-intercept, you've got to look for an x value of zero, and that corresponding y value is going to be your y-intercept. Okay, so that was on page 16. If you didn't catch something, again, with any video, you can pause it, rewind it, rewatch it to make sure you got it. But let's go ahead and move on to, when you're ready, let's go ahead and move on to page 17. Here we have a graph. Betty's Bakery uses a chocolate chip cookie recipe that calls for a certain ratio of brown sugar to butter as shown on the graph. So again, this recipe for cookies has a ratio of brown sugar to butter. Again, brown sugar to butter, change in y over the change in x. That's our ratio that we're looking at. What is the slope? Well, you know slope from a graph. You make a slope triangle. I see the two points that they gave us. So we're going to draw our slope triangle, rise, and then run. Notice on your y-axis, they're going by ones. So this goes up one, two, three squares. And then your run going across, you're going across four squares. Again, they're going by ones on both the x and y axis. So I know that my slope, my rise over run, is three over four. What is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is where your graph crosses the y-axis. I can see right here that it's crossing at the origin, right? It's hitting the y-axis. This is your y-axis right there at the origin. So the y-intercept is zero. Now it says to write an equation. So again, don't forget your slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. We can plug three-fourths in for the slope, and we can plug zero in for the y-intercept. So our equation is going to be y equals three-fourths x plus zero. Um, if you'd rather, you can simplify or drop off the zero and just say y equals three-fourths x. I would accept it written either way. What does the slope represent in the situation? Again, your slope is your rise over your run. So it's this ratio of brown sugar to butter. So it means that every three cups of three cups of brown sugar for every four cups of butter. Again, that's the ratio that we're seeing in this recipe. So for every three cups of brown sugar, I'm going to need four cups of butter, depending upon how many batches I make of these chocolate chip cookies. Um, and then the last question, it says, what does the y-intercept represent in this situation? Again, your y-intercept, it's where your graph is crossing the y-axis, it's zero. 
So that means that for this recipe, the recipe uses zero cups of brown sugar for zero cups of butter, which again, hopefully makes sense. Because if you're not using any brown sugar, then you're not going to be using any butter and probably you're not making any, any, any cookies at all. So we start out at zero, zero. The next problem here, number three, we're going back to a table. This time our table is going across. So um, my X's are the miles traveled and my Y's are the gallons of fuel. What is the slope? So again, we're going to start with um, zero is my X one and zero is my Y one. So there's one ordered pair of points. 30 is my X2 and 156 is my Y2. So there's my second point. I'm going to plug this into the slope formula. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So I get 156 divided by 30. And this is when um, I would go to my calculator and plug that in. Um, when you plug it in, I think you get, hopefully I'm right, I think we get 5.2. So my slope is 5.2 gallons per mile. Again, look at our units, gallons per mile, change in Y over the change in X, gallons per mile. So I'm going to use 5.2 gallons for every five, sorry, 5.2 gallons for every mile that the airplane flies. Letter B, what is the y-intercept? So again, to find the y-intercept, you want to look for an x value of 0 and find the corresponding y value. So in this problem, my y-intercept is 0. So in letter C, when it says to write the equation, again, remember y equals mx plus b. So we're going to plug in 5.2 for our slope and 0 for our y-intercept. So our equation is going to be y equals 5.2x plus 0, or just y equals 5.2x. You can always simplify or drop off the 0. Letter D, what does the slope represent in the situation? So again, remember your slope is your gallons of fuel for every mile that you travel. So the plane uses, the plane uses, 5.2 gallons of fuel for every mile traveled. And then the last question in this problem says, what does the y-intercept represent in the situation? Um, so it represents zero miles is equal to zero gallons of fuel. Again, if you're not traveling any miles, you're not going to need any fuel. So if you don't have any fuel, you can't go any miles. Um, that's a, a representation of a y-intercept at the origin at zero. Um, next, in problem four, they give you a graph and you have to come up with the equation. Draw your slope triangle. Be careful of your scale. I'm going to have you guys try problem four on your own. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video right now and go ahead and figure out your slope with the slope triangle, the y-intercept from the picture, write your equation, and then see if you can answer letters D and E. Um, so right now, go ahead and pause it and fill in problem four. So hopefully your slope, this is a little tricky because your y-axis was going by threes. So I know you went up three squares, but that's actually three, six, nine. The rise is nine. The run, I'm going across or to the right two. So nine divided by two is 4.5 or four and a half. The y-intercept, it's crossing the y-axis right there at 12. So hopefully for your equation, you have y equals 4.5x plus 12. Letter D, what does the slope represent in the situation? Again, that's the cost per game. So every game is going to cost me $4.50. So again, cost per game. And then letter E, what does the y-intercept represent? Um, it's the cost of $12 to just rent the shoes. So again, they rent the shoes first. That's your starting point. And then after that, you have to pay $4.50 for each game that you play. 
Um, so that's uh, our lesson for um, lesson four of our functions unit. For our homework, I'd like you to just go ahead and turn the page with me really quick. Your homework is going to be the next two pages. So it's going to be pages 18 and 19, problems one through six. Again, I think the graphs should be easy for you because you've come up with equations from graphs before. Find two points, do a slope triangle to get your slope. Find the y-intercept and then write the equation. If they give you a table, use two points to calculate the slope. Find the y-intercept so you can write the equation. Um, so again, I want you to go ahead and try problems uh, one through six on pages 18 and 19 for homework tonight. Um, have a good day. Stay healthy.